Good morning, Coffee Time friends. It is coffee time for sure. Um, Mama is in a cooking mood. She's cooking for a friend of ours, and uh, she's going to make some homemade pinto beans. And I better get over here before she has it finished before we get to see her. Mama, show us about your beans. Oh, I'm just still looking them. This is what we call looking beans. And right here, I found why you should look them. Ours a grain of corn. Grain of corn in the beans? Yeah, I had never found that before. Oops. You all right? Yeah. I'm and this bean is bad. It's got black on it. That's a little messed up, so look your beans. I've always looked mine. And what are we looking for, Mama? Tell them. Dirt, rocks, corn, corn whatever, <laughs> bad beans. So there is a grain of corn. Perhaps they process corn where they process beans. And here's another little grain of corn. It's hmm. well blessed with corn. I've never had corn in my beans before that I can remember. Corn, corn, look at that. Was it the first time for everything? And I felt rocks and dirt and everything like that, but not corn. So you're culling out some beans that just don't look... To suit me. So if they're half or... Well, I used to if there's halves, I culled everything in and it wasn't perfect bean. But now I've learned to leave the halves. <laughs> times is hard. Yeah, times is hard and uh, they'll come apart anyway. Yeah. So these are just... Pinto beans. Save a lot of brand that I Soup have. beans. A lot of folks call them soup beans. Now, this one looks like something's aged on it. I don't want it in there. And there's another one. Well, I don't know about eating on it. It just looks like the outside. It's mashed up, messed up. I ain't taking no chances on stuff <laughs> like that. I don't want that in here. I love it. Even though I'm not going to be the one to eat it. You're even more picky when someone else is eating it. I try to be picky no matter what. You do a good job of most of the time, Mama. Yeah. Most of the time you are picky. Now, what are you scooping them off into? A colander? Uh, an old colander I've had here so I can wash them good. Mama, that don't look like Tupperware to me. It ain't Tupperware. <laughs> a little Tupperware. Well, I've got a bigger Tupperware, but this one was just handy here. <laughs> so you look them, get the good ones, if there's one that doesn't look. That's then, what I'm picking today, Linda Bailey says. I'm not finding any rocks or any dirt, just corn and bad beans. Morning now, are you, was your, how was your night? It was, it was fine, Becca. We had um, rain a little bit and the wind blew a little bit. It was kind of warm, and I was afraid sometimes warmth here, especially late at night, means you're going to get a storm. So I was kind of afraid we may be going to see some storm. Hey, Sharon. Um, but we didn't. We ended up not getting much at all, and I'm thankful for that. Thank y'all for your prayers. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Good morning, Randy. Good morning, Pat. Hey, Claudette, how are you? Love pinto beans. We do, too. We're not going to be eating these, though. These are going to be for a friend of ours. Um, he loves pinto beans. He works for us a lot, and he's like family. And uh, he loves Mama's pinto beans. And uh, so anytime she knows he's going to be in the neighborhood, she's going to fix him some pinto beans because he's a... I think I'll get a few more that don't look like... Mama said they don't look like a nut for him. She's going to fix him some more. For seven hours, Amanda Webb... Um, we never did lose electricity. Well, you all saw. It blinked and then come right back on. Then it blinked and come back on. Done that a few times. But um, when I went to bed, I set the clocks. Mama, what? Now? She's left y'all. She, she gone. I lost the country. You've left the country. Um, what have you dropped in the floor over there, Mama? There's something in your floor. Something like this. Maggie's been over there. Well, that tells a lot if Maggie's been over there. 
But uh, we never did lose electricity again. I think the wind's kind of calmed down. So we were very fortunate and blessed. Uh, my mama always looked the pinto beans. Like the ah. <laughs> She was very picky, Susan. <laughs> Mama's picky, but she's messy. Look at this. I was playing that my we used to be silers, bean only people. We wouldn't use anything but silers. And um, our stable lot had this brand on sale. Mama, show them the brand. Oh, I don't know. Star. We don't have a star or something. Hey, don't spill on that. Hayes Star brand. And. Um, they could be sellers too. We don't know. Sometimes that happens. But anyhow, we got these and just to try because we didn't have sellers. So we found we liked them very well. And um, so we use them. Keep some dried beans on hand, folks. You can live on some dried beans. Um, if something happens, you can't get to the store or... During the pandemic, stores were closed, shelves were empty. Doesn't hurt to store some dry beans. And Mama's continuing to look and not talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Mama, you should have been a librarian. I could. I used to work in the library in high school. Did you? What'd you do? Checked out books and fixed cards and fixed books up. And Mama, let's that break was that. one of my beta club let's break that down you uh, i don't know if you're aware or not but libraries have changed what well back what in the cards are you talking about tell them about these cards library the back of the books was always a card and you they wrote their name you wrote their name there was a little pocket in the card yeah in the book and you had a paper card in it yeah, and you put the name and the date they checked it out, and they had so long to bring it back. Or they had to pay off fee. Yeah, so much a day if it's late. So, how many of y'all had library cards? Some of y'all on here did. Some of y'all are like, what back are you Back in the about? 60s, we had them. Back in the 80s, we had them. Uh, what about a thing called a card catalog? Y'all, anybody know what that means? I'm sure some of y'all do, but some of you younger ones are like, what is he talking about? Yeah. It was a big old wooden piece of furniture with many, many little drawers in it. And you had to go and look up your book and it would kind of tell you where it was at in the library. It was a catalog of all the, you know, the good old days, story. It was a catalog of all the books in the library. And uh, you could, do that and on the back of the card you can see who had had the book before you jenna we love pinto beans too that was uh, i cooked mine with some bacon grease yes ma'am onion we don't put onion in it when we cook it i've heard of that i can't eat it some though. finely diced jalapenos no spicy just for flavorful i would probably enjoy those beans kathy but i don't know if mama would even eat them she don't she wouldn't eat with onions cooked in them i don't believe the Dewey I'm Decimal sure. System. Yes, some of y'all know Beth uh, and Kieran. I know, yeah, I'm that old. I'm I'm card catalog old. I remember the library cards. Yeah, and you can see Hood had it. And you said, so this book's not been checked out in five years. You had to. Uh, Hello from Kentucky. Hello, Heather Hurley. It was fiction and, and non-fiction and romance and history and all of that different categories and you had to put them in the right place and and what mama and do all the work that was my three periods did a study hall i worked an hour to is that beta hours beta hours yes do they still do beta hours for kids we had to work we did too I'm just wondering if they still do beta hours. I don't. Me and Molly, my first cousin, we all we center. usually work here, together. Here, just set those here, Mama. If you go away to put them up, we'll never see you again. <laughs> oh, Getting Mama. you back in line will be oh. hard. So that's your big kettle from your. What brand is that? Does that your uh, when you started housekeeping with? Yeah, this is the town craft. Town craft. 
And then she's gonna put some water on them and just uh, filter. You put it in filter water? Uh, first thing that, 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 I cook mine with bacon grease from Kentucky. Uh, Teresa, that's the that's the southern white. Uh, you know, really, I should have, if I thought, I could have got some of that. What do we have for New Year's? Smoked hog chow. Smoked hog chow. some of it in the freezer there. I'm going to get some out. Oh, you're going to get it out? Yeah, I've seen the package. So, Mama's going to use some smoked hog chow that we had left over from New Year's. And... Uh, It'll be awful tasty in there. I see, I see. We had library cards at my elementary school. I still remember the first book I checked out. Uh, John, I remember we had to check a book out every week. We had, Mama's gone again, she's over here filling in that freezer. We had to check a book out every week and do a book report uh, in third grade. So we, we checked out lots of books. Um, I remember my granny, I checked out one of the Laura Ingle Wilder books, The Little House on the Prairie books, and I brought it home to um, do a book report, and I laid it on the kitchen table, which that's where you lay everything as a kid. I mean, you come in from school, you throw your books on the kitchen table. Always did. And uh, granny picked the book up and she started reading it, and I had to... I had to work around her schedule to get to read my book so I could do my report. And she read it all, and I had read it all. And uh, she said, do they have any more of those down there? And I said, yeah, they got several of them. And she said, well, bring another one home. So I started having to check out two books a week, one for me and one for Granny. So uh, Granny got through all the book series. So last, Mama read them too, didn't you? I think I did. So last... Christmas. This Christmas. This Christmas. I knew it was a like Christmas. I found online the whole series, and it's a, a box set. And so I bought them for Mama for uh, Christmas. Have you read any of the new ones? No. I've not got in to read. I went back to crocheting. She started crocheting the other day. I said, well, Mama, it's summer now. Isn't crochet what you use to do in the winter? She said, yeah, I know. It just hit me to do. <laughs> I felt like I was useless, not doing nothing. You and did. I, well, yeah. Why was you feeling that way, Mama? Well, was you being useless and not doing nothing? Yeah, I think I was because uh, I thought, while I'm sitting here watching this TV, son, I could be crocheting. So snowflakes ain't hot to do. You can do them all year. Ain't right? hot. Yeah, yarn. If you make a Afghan oh. stuff that you gotta hold it in your lap and do it. So that's what you do in the winter? Yeah. I thought you said was meaning to say hard and you said hot, but hot. You I see what you're saying. And snowflakes is just a little bitty white thread and in your hand. Uh -huh. So it don't make you you can do them summer. Would you all like to see Mama crochet a snowflake one night? No. <laughs> I'm not a good crochet. I'm not good at all. <laughs> Mama, what are you doing up there in that cabinet? I'm trying to get it. Shall I get it for you? I think I've reached it by now. Oh, is there no salt in the shakers back there? No, it's yeah, good. there's a, there's four oh. shakers on the back of that stove, and both of them have salt in them. Well, I got the real McCoy out. And then there's a big shaker of salt that's empty there. It needs filled. It's empty. That's one I use. That's the reason it's empty. Linda says she knew you were smart enough to wash them with your beans, Mama. <laughs> I wouldn't need them if I... I was at a lady's house one time, and she didn't look her. She just dumped them out of the bag. But I'll do credit. I, she might have looked them earlier. And rebagged them? And rebagged them. I don't know. Are you know. just giving a lot of credit? 
Well, I hope that was what it was. I thought that way. Are you following me? Mama, it's a job. <laughs> it's harder than you would think to keep you on camera. Well, quit doing that. Let me, let me be. <laughs> what you be what? Let me be me and move. <laughs> I'll sit a little bit close to you. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, Mama, so what? Um, John don't like cornbread with his, his mama fixed him biscuit bread. Biscuits or biscuit bread. Yes. Or what we call pone bread, not corn, pone. P-O-N, like pawn. Like a pone of bread. We call it a pone of biscuit bread. And it's not hoe cake. Um, a lot of folks, what we know is hoe cake. Now, I'm not a, a bread specialist or not. But do y'all know where hoe cake got its name? Hoe cake, back in the olden days, they had fireplaces. And they would, you know, you'd have to rig up something, an arm, to hold a pot, and they'd fix stew and stuff over that a lot. Um, if you wanted to fix a little bit of bread, you'd have to build a fire in the stove. Well, you had a fire up in the fireplace. So a lot of times they would take their garden hose, got a blade on it about that big, with a long handle, you hoe the garden. They just wash that off, and they would put a little bit of uh, cornmeal or biscuit bread on that blade and stick it in that fire. And it would get hot and it would cook. And that was a hoe cake. So it comes from um, garden hoe. And that's how come they caught them a hoe cake because they just would fix one or two or something and they didn't have to reheat the whole oven or whatever they was doing. Most folks have kept some kind of fire in the stove year round. I had a great aunt, Mama's aunt, Aunt Elle. You go to her house, summer, winter, any time of year, and she had a wood stove. Cook stove. Cook stove. And any time you went, her house smelled of hickory smoke. I can still smell it today. It was just a, a childhood memory. But she would always have a little small something cooking, on the cooking and, and there would always be a little fire in there. And you would look by her stove or by the door and she'd have five gallon buckets and boxes of little pieces of wood about that big and about that big around and her kindling. And she would crack it up with a um, hatchet and should always have enough kindling and should throw a few pieces of kindling in there and keep that fire going all the time. I've been there in July and it's hot outside and smoke coming out of the chimney because she always had a little fire going with something cooking, didn't she? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't anything but water boiling on the, or not boiling but simmering in a pot, like a coffee pot. She always had coffee on the stove. So, and she would save her food if she had that much of anything left <laughs> she would save it you would get in her freezer and there'd be little tiny dabs of this that mm -hmm. and another about here and about there and she would save it and then one day she'd get a bunch of it out and fix it and have her a meal <laughs> now right across the counter space there right across the kitchen was a nice electric stove she could have turned on and used. She said she just didn't like to use that. She'd rather use the, the food tasted better. It tasted on. better on the cook stove. So she had both, but she would always keep the cook stove going. Um, good memories. And I always had bags, boxes of, of rags, scrap rags. And she was always putting a quilt together or putting a pillowcase together. Or something with those rags when she wanted. And she always would get the colors, she'd match them up. I mean, it was just, she was just a, a little peek into what um, life of yesterday was like. And I enjoyed it and remember it and cherish those memories. The beans are already a boy. They're already boiling. At a rolling boil. Now, 
You let them boil like that for about 15 minutes. And you come down to simmer. And you let them almost boil. You want them to be just about to the boiling point. Some folks around here, the magic number is six hours. We boil ours a little quicker. You all know mama's not patient. So, mama will boil, cook hers a couple of hours. They're done. They're brown. Their juice is brown. And the beans are as tender as that can be. They say in this pound crop you can cook a lot less time because it's five layers of steel on the bottom and it holds the heat. How long do you think it takes? It'll take a couple of hours. A couple of good hours of yeah. cooking. Now you can make them in a pressure cooker and you can do them uh, quicker. Now the, I've not had a pressure cooker in the years. You can make them in a Tupperware pressure cooker. Yeah. You have to make them in about an hour and you do them 30 minutes at a time. You have to put them in, let them cook for 30 minutes, take them out, let the pressure come off from them, and then stir them, put them back in, you can get them done in about an hour. Uh, my mommy had one of those little round pressure cookers with the handle on it. And when she was in a hurry, she'd fix potatoes and beans or meat in it. And I never did like the flavor. The flavor of was that it. just because you knew that you fixed them in there and you thought this ain't the same? No, I could taste the, the pressure. Not the pressure. <laughs> it had a different taste to me. <laughs> I was real picky of them. Oh, Mama! <laughs> <laughs> How could you say that? But, and I potatoes was the list. Least that I like. I just did not like no potatoes in that thing. Just couldn't handle. It. This is the same woman <laughs> who told me if you put celery and onions in a food processor or the power chopper, that it would make your dressing taste out. I see it would make it real little and watery. But now she's come around. I got it by hand for you all my life. She's come around and she's okay with it now. She does say, don't chop it too little. Yeah. But she likes When it. I have my dressing, I like little chunks of celery. And that way you can bite into it and have a little crunch. Or if it's not real hard and tasty, I like them little chunks. 43 minutes, she says she can fix. Uh, Marcella says she can fix. Now you're talking about probably an Instapot. A lot of folks use an Instapot. I was reading where the Instapots was catching on fire for some reason. Not all of them, Mama. There's tons of Instapots. Well, I don't know. There's recalling some. Oh, they're always recalling something, Mama. Yeah. They was recalling hmm, something I just ate while I'm at. <laughs> oh, recalling something you ate? Well, I don't... Did you have peanut butter? Was it jiffy? It was crunchy peanut butter. You know, it was the kind you eat that we had some ways of eating it with pretty bizarre. I survived half of the jar, so I think the other half wouldn't hurt me. Mom said, that half a jar. <laughs> they recall a lot of stuff, and I, I respect them for doing it, but sometimes it's like, mm. I know what it was. It was, it wasn't nothing bad, but it was if you're allergic to nuts. It was some kind of food. That very cross contaminated. And it had uh, made may contain some kind of nuts in it for it. Well now off. let me make this clear. Yeah. We're not recalling nothing on here and we're not recalling Jeff no. <laughs> But you remember when it was recalled, that was not a secret, it's been a year ago or more. But, uh, so don't say John and Mama said that there's recall peanut no. No. That was a long time ago. No, back. that was a while back. But, but I do I remember when they did, that jar when they did recall it years ago or months ago, whenever it was. Mama said, nah. <laughs> I done ate half. We've ate half a jar. <laughs> I ain't going away a half a jar of peanut butter. It was all right. I said, no, Mama, that's a buck fifty you'd be putting. I, I survived a half a jar, so I figured I survived <laughs> But I remember now, I can't think what the product was, but it could contain nuts, yeah, which is very serious for somebody who's allergic to nuts. Yes. 
Very gross. It wasn't peanut butter, it was something else. Let's quit talking about it before we cause a national disturbance here. Because <laughs> nothing that we know of is recalled today. No. Okay. Now, I know y'all probably ain't going to believe this. Some of you bean cookers will. I'm already smelling those beans. And they've only been on there 10 minutes. And I'm already smelling pinto beans. It's just a wonderful smell in them. I'm a fresh cook smell. It's the smell that I remember coming home to as a kid from school. And I would smell that and I would know pinto beans were cooking. Or I'd come home to... Um, Mustard greens. Mustard greens. You, your daddy, he'd go outside when I was cooking. I, mean, you I loved them. You loved I can them. eat mustard greens. For me not to eat as healthy as I should, I love healthy food. Like, I love cooked mustard greens, just cooked mustard greens. I don't like them. Don't even have to fry them. Just boil them and give me a little bit of salt on them, and I can sit and eat them. Love them. I love um, a lot of things like. I can eat a baked potato. Uh, I, I seen Mama Sue and Harold yesterday was talking about they was making baked potatoes, and uh, I was watching their video, and Harold said I can eat a baked potato with just salt and pepper, and I said me too. Love just a plain old baked potato, not a stick of anything on it, salt and pepper on a mango. Mm -hmm. Love cooked chicken, just cook it, and I'll eat it. Salt and a little buttery. But then I wanna I find everywhere in the world I can to make stuff unhealthy with cheese and sour cream and cream cheese. Even though I love it the other way. I wonder sometimes I, you know, like a piece of cooked chicken and a baked potato with a little salt and pepper on it would be absolutely delicious to me. Um Not me. I have to have butter and sour cream and most Mama of the time loves cheese. sour cream. Yeah. But yeah, I thought that was yesterday when he was saying, "Now I can eat some pepper." I thought about us. She said, "What she liked on her potatoes, he didn't like, and what he liked, she didn't like." So I thought, "Boy, I'm sure y'all follow. I'm sure y'all follow Mama Sue." Uh, She's so, a sweet thing. Yeah, we we really like her and Harold, and um, so she was talking about she didn't like uh, sour cream, and he didn't like guacamole, so when they order. Mama don't want any guacamole. Like, if you go to Mexican, I said, no I guacamole. could eat great together. <laughs> no guacamole. And I'll say, bring her guacamole on the side. Because I want it. <laughs> and you're going to pay for it. So I said, uh, just, could you just put in the dish on the side? And I said, sure. So, uh, yeah, I order her guacamole on the side. Don't leave it off. I'll eat it. I love guacamole. I love avocados. Um, I love homemade hummus. Have I made homemade hummus for y'all in a while? It's been a minute. I know it has. I've made it, but I don't think I've made it uh, and filmed it in a while because I, um, it's been a year or more. So we'll make us some hummus. Have y'all ever made homemade hummus? You was bad. I love any yeah. kind of greens. Uh, we are boiling crawfish today. Ooh. Deanna, that sounds good. Not for me. Not for Mama. Mama don't want any kind of... Uh, for She don't want any kind of fish. She will eat cod and whiting okay. at the store if we bread it and fry it. You know, we tried it in the air fryer and we failed I miserably. Mama did not like that. She ate one little piece or two and that was all I could get her to eat. And, and me and Maggie ate the rest of it. I ate... Um, I took the breading off and just gave Maggie the white center part. She liked it. And uh, it was okay, but I didn't care for it. But, you know, some of y'all tell me we've done it wrong. I, I've ordered a new sprayer for oil because I think the ones I have don't mist it the way it needs. It don't cover it. One lady said spray with, spray with Pam. Pam. Both sides. I've coated it real good and then I fried. But I ordered, which you can buy avocado spray now, but I ordered, um, I don't know why I get weirded out spraying food with pan. I know that's ridiculous because you spray the pan and put the food on it, but then when you spray it right on it, it's like you're painting it. It makes me a little, I don't know, it just seems weird to spray aerosol on your food and then <laughs> bake it. I know it's fine. Don't say Johnny won't hurt because I know it won't hurt. It's just a weird kind of idea to me. But anyway, I did find this 
it's supposed to spray a fine mist over everything. So I'm gonna try that and just, I'm gonna try fish one more time there for air. Spray it good. Spray it good. And it was crunchy. I like the crunchy outside and a black tender. Yeah. Fish inside, and it was crunchy. Did you eat how many? Did you eat of that? Two, three little nuggets. Yeah, but it wasn't the flavor. I guess I put my like grease on it. Mom wants some grease in her diet. But we'll do some with some avocado oil in a skillet and deep frying some avocado oil. It won't be too bad. So we're gonna try some more. But um, if Mama eats catfish, she'll eat corn, cornmeal. Um, breaded catfish. I've got there's a restaurant here in town, the pizza spot, and they have it. And I'll either go out there and order just catfish, or I'll get two catfish dinners. Sometimes we bring home. Um, so you do like that, don't you? Yeah, I really do. And she'll even suggest that. Like, I'd like to have some catfish. Like, okay, let's go get it. So sometimes that's what we do. Mom, what are you going to cook for us today? Oh, I don't know. Or did you make enough beans for all of us? Well, not really. Unless you just <laughs> eat a little bowl of them. <laughs> not really. We had beans the other day and we had a bowl of them. So. Um, but we used them in chili. Oh, I've still got a little bowl of them. Oh, we were going to do refried beans with those extra beans, yeah. weren't we? Mm -hmm. Why do we do that? We make plans and can't remember to do it. We still got lasagna left. I guess we're having leftovers today. Probably a little lasagna. We got salad left. And those beans are in there for refried beans. We want to do it. Or make some kind of Mexican rice. The beans are smelling good. Now look here, Mama. Wait up. In this little container over here is liquid gold. Show them, Mama. Bring it over here and show them the liquid gold. So in this little container is liquid oh, gold. Somebody's got a fried bacon. It's way down in there. And we just keep it there by the stove. It's got a little rubber gasket, that little wooden lid. We we'll put it in there. It's a crock. It's a crock of a thing. And then um, put our grease in there. And then it just sits there, not in the refrigerator. And we just dip in it when we need it. Now, you That's do need another thing. My mommy left her grease in a, it was grease cans back then, and it fell all over It was little grease cans back then, and uh, I've got a grease can or two here that I picked up. On the, cat, on the stove all the time, or on the cabinet right by the stove. The ones I have look like little coffee pots, little silver coffee cup pots with black candles, and they say grease on the side of them. Yeah, that's what this. Is that hers? Had just a little round. And what they would do is they would slide that over near the stove. And hers, if I can't, if I remember, I know on the last one she had, I don't know about all of them, it had the little strainer mm -hmm. in top and just up here. They would slide that over on the stove and let that grease melt and then it would pour it out. We always used it for our cornbread pans. That's what your daddy liked. Greasy cornbread. Greasy cornbread. He liked for you to use the bacon, bacon grease. grease and put it in the skillet a lot. And then and we we got three bread. basic cornbreads here that, that Mom and I used to just make one kind. But then when Dad was here, he had he like three basic kinds. We've got one that we call um, a thin bread or thin cornbread, thin pone, and we have one that uh, we call fancy cornbread. And if we say fancy cornbread, that means we're going to put a little flour in it and some eggs and make it fluff up. And it's got a more inside. Mama likes it about that thick and a little more crust. And that's Mama's thin cornbread. Fancy cornbread, I mean, she doesn't put any flour. She don't want it to rise. She just wants it a flat pound of cornbread. Fancy cornbread, we put a little bit of flour in it. self rising flour and it'll puff up and you'll have... More like cake cornbread. Fancy cornbread is good with milk and bread. Or soup beans. You're a crumble up, but now you daddy Or if you're like, taking it to church. Your daddy liked the greasy cornbread. With greasy the cornbread is where you, we start those out with vegetable oil. Those in the pan. Greasy cornbread, we start out with bacon, bacon renderings, bacon grease. 
and the, the cornbread is greasier or just you and know. sometimes I have put a little bit in the cornbread the baking grease to flavor them. yeah and then we fry cornbread and we'll have pound, uh, cornbread, cornbread fritters and we have lacy cornbread and there is a thing called hot water cornbread now we don't, I don't fix it. we don't do the hot water but we do a lacy cornbread and it's just where it's real thin and it'll get little holes in it and it's crunchy so, <laughs> crack and there's crackling bread where you put actual pig rendered lard in it. What you have left after you render it is little, what you may think of as pork rinds, basically. And you put those in your cornbread and you can buy them at the store. I'll buy some and we'll make some crackling bread one day. You just stir them in. I used to always make homemade cracklings and use We used them. to have homemade cracklings, rendered lard. I used to do everything the hard way. Oh, I can't sit in this one spot. It gets on my nerves to sit still all the time. Um, and when you're seasoning your cast iron, you want to use that animal protein. You won't. Don't season your cast iron. Now, this is just our opinion. So don't season your cast iron with vegetable oil or those kind of oils. Use actual lard, not vegetable. Uh, bacon renderings works, or fry you some bacon in them. That works well too. But you want to get it good and hot and have good protein lard in it. You can buy lard at the store. It's on the bottom shelf usually and it says hard lard or pure lard. Not, hear my words, not Crisco. It's solid. Crisco. That's not lard. Crisco is vegetable shortening. So you want to use lard rendered from proteins. We made all of our lard. But a lot of people think Crisco's lard. Mm -hmm. It's not. That's vegetable solid. So use protein lard to render to uh, mm -hmm. render lard to seasonings. About Crisco for Eve. How she said her stomach was bothering her. She'd use some off brand. And she jewel. Jewel I believe. Snowdrift. Jewel. It's jewel. It had meat fats in it. Oh. It's in a shortening ham, but it was from oh. meat byproducts. My mama it's always cooked their real deal, never used box stuff. Um yeah. Carolyn, that's the norm for around here, usually. I'm going to let her out. She's not going to stuff to do it. Said. She's just one of where John is to bother I know. him. She'll Maggie me. loves John as much as she loves me and Mama. In fact, he could take her any day and she would just say, Bye, I'm out of here. Um, and anytime he's here, she loves to be with me. I wish you would cook potato soup. Okay, Stephanie, we can do that. Um, we Mama makes it. We make two versions. There's the Mama version, which is just soup, uh, potatoes, stewed potatoes, and with thickening in them, salt and pepper, and you put a little cream in those. Um, my version is more like a loaded potato soup, and I have onions and cheese and bacon and all that, you know, stuff like that in there. Bacon grease is really good in pinto beans. It is, Anthony. That's what Mama just put in there uh, with some bacon grease. And she says she has some um, fat back she's going to get out of the freezer and put in there. Or if you changed your mind. I did put that in there. Oh, you didn't put the fat back? Yeah. Hogjaw. Hogjaw or strickling. It was uh, fat. And All those things are good in pinto beans. And then I put some bacon. Now, if you want to make my daddy mad, make him think that we were fixing pinto beans and it was really mixed beans. You can buy them in the store and they're mixed pinto and white beans. Like this, but you'll see white beans. I love them. He never did like them. If he thought we were having pintos and we poured out some white beans and mixed beans, it's out. Well, you just run the pinto beans. <laughs> I love mixed beans with ham in it cooked ham so like if we have a, we buy a ham 
shank and it's got the bone in it. Mixed beans are delicious with that cooked in it. Or even white beans are good with that in it. So there's I all might kinds of... I like the white beans as well too. I know. Do we have a hand bone? I don't know. Yeah, I'll buy one. one if we need one, Mama. Oh. Uh, to have some good white beans with ham. Good old Southern Eats. It's sunshiny, it's beautiful. You never would have known we had storm warnings. I hope everybody fared through the storms as well as we did. I, I love mixed beans and white beans best ever. I do too, probably. Uh, but just side by side. But I love pintos. I didn't used to. Um, but I do like some mixed beans. I'm not a big pinto thing either. I ate it all my life when I was starving. <laughs> I've got an uncle that won't touch them. He said he had them every day of his life. Yeah. Since the price of eggs came down, I bought extra and I'm going to pickle. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Gina. She's going to pickle her some eggs. We were having a conversation with some people the other day about pickled eggs, and they had never uh, heard of using leftover pickle juice or beet juice to pickle boiled eggs. And we were telling how good it was. So, like, if you have a jar of pickles and you have some hard-boiled eggs, now I would probably go with hard-boiled eggs. Uh, eggs cook 12 minutes at least. Uh, that's the perfect hard-boiled egg to me. Is let them be in the hot water for 12 minutes and that keeps that green from forming. If you have trouble digesting eggs and you say, eggs just, boiled eggs, I just can't eat them. They just don't agree with me. You boil them too long and it's got that green around the yolk. That is sulfur stuff. It, it won't digest. And that's the reason you have trouble with hard boiled eggs. You need to... We put our eggs in cold water on the stove with some salt. And we let them come to a boil. And once they start boiling, we let them boil about five or six minutes. Turn it off. Let them stand in the boiling water till about the 10th minute or the 11th minute. Drain them, rinse them in cold water immediately. And you, we don't get that green around our yolks. Uh, that makes them easier to digest. It makes them smell better, taste but I mean, there's just a good reason for that. But um, anyhow, if you have leftover pickle juice, you have some eggs that have been cooked like that. Peel them and drop them in that juice. Like the beets that we eat on salad. When those beets are gone, or they don't even have to be gone. You can just have beets in there with them. Drop you two or three eggs in there, or six eggs in a quart jar or whatever. In that purple beet juice, and those eggs will get pickled. And they'll have that beet juice in them. They're delicious. Um, also, um, you can use dill pickle juice as vinegar. So, you're, you know, anything pickled. Or bread and butter pickles and drop you some eggs in there. They're great on a salad. They're great just to eat. Uh, you can buy pickled eggs in stores, but you can make them at home with some leftover pickle juice. Simple, simple. I remember. I pickled eggs today. I use beets, pickling spice, vinegar, and a little sugar. Put it in a glass mm -hmm. container. Done. Yeah. Can't, that's wonderful. That's why we make them basically, except we use our leftover beet juice. I love these two. We like ours hot and spicy. Now, Mary, I do too. And sometimes I will take a jar of pickles, throw me in a couple, and put some Frank's hot sauce in there. Let those set for a few days. Mm, great lunch. I like to do that for lunch. Grab a couple of them out of the morning, put them in a, a container, a Tupperware container, or a Ziploc bag even, and salting crackers. Makes a great lunch. It is rough to thank you for those stars, D. Uh, somebody else sent some stars while I got on it, so thank you too. Uh, let's see. Somebody had just had a message on there and it got away. Hmm. Sometimes they crawl. Sometimes, sometimes they just disappear. Why? How long does it take for the eggs to pickle? Sarah, it's kind of like a Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Pop. <laughs> we may never know the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, they'll pickle 
in a 24, 48 hours time, but it a little bit, you'll get a little bit of taste on it. If you can leave in five or six days, it's best. Um, but usually by the next day, I'm wanting them. So mine get about 24 hours at best, and then I start eating them. Sometimes one will get left in there, or two will get left in there for three days or four days, but they're always good and pickled then. Uh, if you leave them in the beet juice long enough, they'll go, it'll be purple all the way to the yolk. Uh, and they're really good then. But um, I've never had a problem keeping them. Don't ask me how long they'll last because I have no idea because I eat them quicker than, than they would ever go bad. But um, I'd say at least a day or two if you can wait. Uh, it's already nice to sit back and listen to. Oh, well, thank you, Dee. <laughs> uh, I love pickled eggs, Tracy. I do too. Sauerkraut hot dish uh, for lunch. I love sauerkraut. My aunt was telling me the other day, Mama's baby sister, she uses country ribs, not baby backs, but just country ribs, and she puts them in the crock pot and gets them cooked good and tender. And then she puts sauerkraut on. And she was saying how no good. Barbecue no barbecue sauce. No barbecue sauce, nothing, just sauerkraut. And she was saying how good they were. So I'm going to try them because I love sauerkraut. I love ribs. Can't imagine they wouldn't be good, and she says her and her family love them. So I'm gonna try that one day, and if I do, I'll let y'all in on that little meal. Um, but country ribs with sauerkraut, just a can of sauerkraut, she said. Uh, have a beautiful day from Gadsden, Alabama. Well, hey Susan, how are you? I, she doesn't like to talk honestly, Teresa says, Mom, they're coming at you. <laughs> She'd rather John do the talking. Somebody tell me to shut up. Sometimes people will say, Teresa, sometimes people will say, John, let Mama talk. You talk to Mama don't talk. She'll answer, but she'll sit there and just listen. That's what Mama is, though. So. Now, Mama talks about a lot of things. She's very smart. She can, she can lead the conversation, but she's just not willing to just sit and talk. I've been around you and your daddy so long. Mama, I? you've never been a topic like that. I mean, I heard her friends would go on the phone. You'd think that uh, she was paid by the word. Your daddy used to say, when we was first married, I couldn't get her to say a word. And he said, Lord, listen to her now. I said, I can't get her to hush up. <laughs> Mama gives me a good talking to her every once in a while. Don't you leave me on that camera and start to hire that singing and dancing business. You know, I don't like that. So sometimes I do it just to aggravate her a little bit. But if you'll notice, I don't get away too far. Sometimes people will say, John, you just sit there and let Mama do all the work. Mama won't have any other way. If I even go over in that area, she, no, I'll get it. Go go back over there. I let me just do get the talking. Even when we're not on video. Yeah. Let me just get it. No, I'll do it, Mama. No. Now, sometimes things I know is heavy and hot and she could spill. She's not helpless by no means, but I just don't want to put her in that predicament, so I'll insist you I'll get it. definitely have to get stuff off the top shelf. Yeah, but Mama's just that way. That's just the way we do. Uh, I'm 6'2", almost 6'3". Mama's 5'2". 5'1", now. 5'1". <laughs> so if we're on video and you can see both of us, <laughs> one of us, I could be sitting down. And you can see she's still shorter than me, even sitting down. Uh, when I stand up, I'm about the same height as you. Because we don't have a camera person, I'm only using see, this phone. That's the only time I feel taller. So when I'm, sitting, when I'm sitting down, I'm straight up at the same time. <laughs> so when I stand up, so if I stand up and you were trying to video, this would be what we would be seeing. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be hard to video. And if we're trying to cook down here, and we're trying to show you all cooking, and it just never works out. We've tried it many times. Uh, we always get comments on it. We get questions about it. This is just the best way we've got it worked out. No, Mama don't sit here on the corner and eat normally just when we're on video. Normally, she sits over there. I sit here. So, you do have to make... It's not that we're doing anything fake for the camera, because we're not. But you do have to move just, into the camera. Just so when we're eating, your mama will eat here and I'll eat here. But if we're not on video, she eats in her I place. I think about on television, you know, especially those old, old shows. They're, uh, 
That side of the table be empty and they're all right here. Yeah, I'll sit four or five on one side. That's kind of because of getting the video. Getting the if we had a camera person, we could both stand up and they could get us in the shot and I could cook. And normally, um, when I cook, I cook right over on that corner. So if y'all aren't here, I cook right over here where Mama was cooking, looking the beans. That's my spot because it's close proximity to the I stove. I shouldn't have thrown that corn away. I should have saved that corn and planed it and see what I got. You know, I got some kind of corn you didn't know, Mom. <laughs> the sink, the stove was right there in close proximity, so it was easy to go. And so that's my little place to stand over there and cook. If I'm making something when we're not videoing. Um, Mama is all over the place. She's like a jackrabbit. You know, you, you send me all the time home to reel her in. That's what you gave me used to call me when I was getting supper ready. I've never, yeah, we've never sat down at a meal with Mama that she didn't get up six or seven times. Uh, if she thinks you might want something, she jumps up. Uh, if Dad would say, is there any onion? Pew, she gone. Uh, <laughs> uh, is there this or is that? And, or she'll look at your... My coffee cup, and she'll say, you know, I want some more coffee. And she'll run and get coffee. I said, no, Mom, I'm fine. I would make a great waitress. You would, Mama. But it's just a southern thing. And it's her heredity because her her mama was that way. I've got aunts that was that way. I've got a great aunt that never eat a bite. i never seen her sit down at the table Thanksgiving, Christmas, or otherwise. She would cook and stand and prance back and forth and eat. <laughs> Stand it up and eat at the sink, and oh, I'll be, I'm gonna sit down in a minute. Never did. Uh, it's heredity. That's the way they act. The whole family's like that. <laughs> they're all. They're, I've come from a long line of good Southern cooks, and um, been in many kitchens in my lifetime, and I've always seen they're all the same. Yeah. And when Mama and her sister are here cooking together, it's like a roller derby. They're choop, choop, choop. Like two little rabbits running around in the field. <laughs> you, you you won't get no stillness out of them. But that's just the way we like work it out. baby cats are playing in the pasture. I love to watch yeah. them play. Yeah. You're sitting here quite a while today, Mama. I'm I know. I've been up and down. I think my back's evolving me from sitting too. <laughs> oh, mercy. <laughs> so that's the way that goes. Um... We did get some stuff in the post office. We will try to show those. Um, Mama's going to get the names on them. Um, let's see, there's a couple more things we got Friday of last week. So we'll try to get our act together and show some of the stuff that some of y'all sent, like Valentine's stuff I that we picked the, up. The salt and pepper shakers and that can opener. I believe that's only two things, but I can't find my paper. You can't find the paper that goes with them? The can opener. And there's no name on the salt and pepper shakers. There was no name on when it came. I didn't find any. We get those sometimes. Uh, let's see if I can find pepper shakers. Then we'll I didn't show. find any. Uh, they could have been. It's just me. There's a can opener. I had that paper, but I cleaned so, up my papers and I've lost that one. Caleb sent us this. And this is, says, yes, you can. It's an auto electric can opener. And in the top, look at this, how neat. When you open it, yes, you can. So, cut up, sent this, and it's a neat little can opener. And there's the song cover. And see, it's an electric um, bag. Okay. So, you pop it off, and it has four, four double legs. So, it says, yes, you can. It reminds me of the one that we have. The tap one, it has no blade. It just unseals it. So I think that'll be a neat little thing. And then this comes right here. There's Kevin, your last name is, is it Weiss or not? Um, I've murdered your last name, I know. But thank you, Kevin, for that. We appreciate it. We thank you for being here. We thank you for watching us. It's a kitchen mama. Right here is all they are. Is that on the can opener? No, this is on the salt, salt pepper, pepper shaker. No, there was a gift card thing of paper for the camera. This has got no name on it, but it just says Florence, South Carolina. And this is the only paper that was in it. It's about the temptation. We get these sometimes. If you sent this, um, here they here's are. the so paper and there's temptations. Yeah. 
Look how pretty the little hummingbird and flowers. And I thought that was cute with the uh, hummingbird as pitcher and stuff, but it, uh -huh. it's tough a lot of those. Are salt things. and pepper. Mm -hmm. I guess this is the salt and this is the pepper. Thank you, thank you. But there's no name and there's no pepper. My granny had tons of these kinds of things. And nothing inside. These little different objects with salt and pepper. She had cows and somebody gave me last year coffee pots. And that was a neat little gift. This actually, they were vintage though. Actually come from QVC. It came from, it was a direct ship so there was no gift card in it. So it came from QVC. Um, look, um, if you sent it, just Where give us a I word. And then, thank you, Caleb, for the can opener. We don't have electric can opener. So that'll be or battery. Or battery, the one. Mom, will come back and sit down. I know it's against your nature. I'm going to put my this stuff. This is pepper shakers. Aren't they neat? Aren't they so cute? And they're perfect for spring. They arrive just in time. Little water and pitchers. Little temptations. We use a lot of temptation stuff. Um, we've had it for a while. We've got orange and some brown and some green, and a little bit of red, just different times. Mama says, get that for Christmas. So that'd be pretty for fall. Or... Mama don't order off QVC, but she I knows do. I do. But she's ordered a lot. She's received a lot. I'll put it that way. It says, I wonder, did that too, put pinto beans? I wonder that too, pintos take a long time to cook if you don't something proper. Soak them, we don't soak them. Um, a lot of folks are soakers and they soak them overnight. We've never soaked them. Um, I think soaking might speed them up a little bit, but we don't have any problem getting them to cook in a couple of hours and, and boil them. Or cook me. It's just, if I Two hours, them, three hours. Sometimes mama puts them at lunch and she cooks them to five o'clock. Sometimes if we're wanting to eat them like for five o'clock, she'll put them on at two o'clock. Um, so there's all kinds of magic numbers out there that people say, oh, I let mine cook all day on low. Or I cook them at six hours. Or I cook them, you know, in 43 minutes in Instapot. Done is done. And once they're done, they're flavorful, and you put your right seasons in them. I, now this is just a personal statement. I don't see any difference in cooking them. If mama cooks them five hours, they're delicious. If she cooks them in two hours and a half, they're good. I don't really find, as long as they're tender, I don't find a difference in them. If your daddy comes Never in, soaked them either. When uh, said. I was cooking them, he'd say, let me have a bite of them. I said, they ain't good and soft yet. Oh, I don't care. Just let me have a bite. He didn't care if that was soft. It would be a little bit hard. I, gotta have I never some. soaked mine either. I never, we never soak any kind of bean. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, there's certain things, and I, I watch shows on here too, and people say, you know, I always want to soak your beans. Or they'll say, you know, just different things like um, string and celery. We don't string celery. The only way we string celery is if we're going to serve it like on a... a for a relish tray or something, you'll eat just the raw celery. Celery sticks. Celery eat. sticks for something, peanut butter in them or pimento cheese. And sometimes we'll have to bite into the celery stick. We'll take the strings off then. But if we're chopping them up for dressing or we're chopping them up for soup, I've never found a string. I've never had a problem with a string. Uh, we just chop them and go on because don't have a problem with it. Some people peel their carrots, some people don't peel their carrots. We normally do peel the carrots because we don't grow them here at home. However, if we do grow them here at home, we have in the past, we never peel those. We wash them and cook them, and the skin is the skin. Potatoes, if we grow them here, a lot of times we'll boil them with the, with the peel on and make soup or something. Um, but... It just depends if you know where your food comes from or if you bought it in the store and you really ain't sure. Uh, same thing with beans. We look them, we wash them good, and we boil them. Uh, we can show you the progress so far. 
You want to go back and look? Here, I'll bring them to you. You get them drunk. I'll get you drunk. You can look at the progress so far and you can see. So you've seen they've been on there about 30 minutes and she's just washed them, looked them, washed them, and put them in the pot. So let's check them out, see where we are. Show the beans, mama. So there they are. They're already Look cooking at it. Look at that Now that's hog jaw. Uh, people don't necessarily eat that. It just uses it for flavoring. Some people did. My daddy now the did. beans. Oh, your daddy did? Yeah. Must have been streak of lean or something he was using. He likes hog jaw. He loved it. Let's see where we are. Oh, they're hard as a rock. I wouldn't get too many of them out. Mama says, I've got too many of her beans. Don't you want me to have them? They're hard, honey. <laughs> see, there they are. Let's see what they are. Now, my daddy would eat them when they're pretty still. As long as he could smell them, he would eat them. If he smelled them, he'd eat them. Nothing dad would do. He did, he would put mayonnaise in here sometimes. <laughs> Y'all put mayonnaise in them. That's a little bit much for me. I have tasted of them being a kid. Um... It, it tastes kind of like potato salad or something. It's weird. It's weird. Um, so let's see if these beans are... They're not... Um, I need something to poke this with, Mama. Uh, here, I've got a knife right here. They're not um, ready to eat by no means, but let's look at them. So they've only been there 30 minutes. So this is the reason I say they don't have to be cooked for five hours or six hours to have good beans. So let's just mash this one. So here's one. They're hot now. So see, there's the bean. Let's try it. So there's the bean. You can see that one popped out. They're, they're still hard, but they will, they're still tender enough that you can cut them apart. Let's see if this little one. They've only been in there 30 minutes. And they're that tender. So give them another hour or two and you'll be able to eat them. Can you see? I'm I know they brought in a good demonstration of it being. But it, this letting you know that they're not stone hard. And if we had soaked them, it would have been a great I've got them in these kettles all these years. They never took real long. They don't take long. Um, those aren't ready to eat, but they could be mashed up enough. You can tell that they're not as hard as a bean. Um, soaking them in cold water will help loosen the jacket on them, but you're going to have to heat them to get them down in there, in that bean. Yes, you think we've never seen a bean, Kathy? You probably have, but some haven't. You'd be surprised at the people who've never cooked a bean, who have just um, bought canned beans. Every time we cook something, people, somebody on here will say, I've never cooked that before. Um, me too. What, what casserole do you all make in Micro Pro Grill? Would make a good cook along. Jill, um, that would. A lot of people may not have the micro pro grill for a cook along. Uh, we do. I've done a chicken casserole in it before. Never heard putting mayo in them. Pat, I have, and a lot of folks on here have talked about it too. I love bean soup, any kind of, uh, except split bean. I don't think I've done split bean. Split peas or beans? That's right, John. Carolyn says. Um, I have never cooked a bean. Karen, it's not hard. It just takes a minute. But maybe two hours. Two, hours, <laughs> two hours, hours, three hours. I'm having pizza for lunch. Yeah, that sounds good too. I had it what, night before last. Um... So a lot of things we do is because our parents did it. So maybe your mama soaked them, told you that, and it's not wrong. And maybe my they are better. Soaked them too. <laughs> Mama's mama soaked them too, but mama says she wasn't doing it. When I worked, I didn't have time. Hey, John, I'm cooking pinto beans too and cornbread. 
onion, some chow chow. Oh yes, pop um, poly cornbread and chow chow. Now John don't like them with cornbread. He prefers biscuit bread because that's what his mama made. Uh, but now we do usually have pinto beans, cornbread, a good vidalia onion, and chow chow. My daddy always eat uh, biscuit bread with his or leftover biscuit or biscuit bread with his pinto beans mm -hmm. instead of cornbread. So it's a it southern must be thing. Old, old southern thing. Old old thing. Old old older than we enjoy. <laughs> older than we uh... Exactly. Thanks for the stars, Dave. Folks, that's all we got. We sure ain't gonna keep y'all on here till these beans are done, but you're gonna see them pretty brown. You sure um, you're put top in the body. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? <laughs> you sure you're gonna quit talking about the before, of course I am, Mama. Mm -hmm. Folks, you enjoy your Saturday. Be blessed. I don't know if we'll be back later on or not, um, but we will be uh, here tomorrow, Lord willing, in the morning for Sunday School Highlights and for Southern Sunday Lunch, even if it's a Southern Sunday Bologna Sandwich. We'll try to show, show it up. Um, do you think I did this for Southern Sunday Lunch, Mama? No. I'm afraid I'll change my <laughs> Wouldn't do any good if she told us because in the mornings when she makes up a real decision. I tried to tell him, give me till in the morning, something will hit me. Let me sleep on it, she'll say. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what we end. And like I said, even if it's a bologna sandwich. And trust me, there's been plenty of Sundays we come home from church, had a bologna sandwich, opened up some pork and beans, and had some Lay's potato chips. Mm -hmm. Just good old, good old food for a Sunday. Your daddy loved that. Uh... Bologna and pork and beans and crackers. Yeah, yeah crackers. that's delicious. I still love it. Yeah, the salting yeah. crackers, pork and beans, and a slice of bologna on a plate. Mm. That's what we took when we went to the mountains a lot, too. <laughs> Simple, but delicious. Mommy, anything you want to add? No, we've talked for years, so. though. Right. Well, somebody I'm... has. Dig, dig. Did I hurt your feelings again? Never, Mama. All right, Mama, say goodbye. I ain't going to let you say goodnight. Say goodbye. Goodbye, Mama. God bless you. Y'all have a blessed day. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye.